fusing the worlds of industrial hip hop and black metal to create a nightmarish new planet. Backwash is one of the most exciting new acts around at the moment. Whether you were converted by last year's God Has Nothing To Do With This, or you were swayed by her latest full length effort, I Lie Here Buried My Rings In My Dresses, she's sure to have made an impression on you. And if you haven't checked out either of those releases, then what are you doing? Stop right now and listen to them, you absolute fool. Anyway, I was lucky enough to have Backwash on my Twitch channel to talk about her album, her creative process, and a very important question about Pokemon and lines. Questions are timestamped in the description down below, but without further ado, here is an interview with Backwash. Yeah, it's pretty honoured for everyone who uh, listened to it. Oh yeah, I think uh, the the love this time around. I mean, I kind of got swept up in the in the um in the hype last year. That's how I got made aware of, and I was like, oh, I need to see about this. But the hype for this album, I feel like, I mean, it must be good for you because you must be kind of worried, thinking, how how am I going to be able to reach the heights of that one? And now it's just like it must be like looking from the top of a mountain now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's laid off some of the pressure. That's for sure. Definitely. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy about that. Uh, that's that's totally fair. I mean, that's something that I was gonna um, ask you was to do with just like you obviously kind of won the Polaris Music Prize in October of last year, was it? Uh yeah, it was October of last year. Yeah, so like at, at that point, was was this new album shaping up to be the way it is now, or was there like did winning that prize kind of affect the trajectory? Uh, I think it it didn't really have that much effect, uh, mm-hmm. honestly. I think it was um, it was just based on, I guess, from this album to this one. This was the next logical step I could take because I think people were wondering as well if you know, then, oh, if since you wanted the Polaris, is the music going to be like, you know, less tragic and we expect something happier? <laughs> but you uh, know. Oh, I want to, as 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 bleak as the lyrics and the songs are, I feel like I want to explore this type of art a bit more in hip hop. You know, there's there's a there's hellish art everywhere, and you know, I think art like that has got a space for it to exist. And I would like to also go further, just like by using hip hop, and you know. Oh. Music oh, that's totally fair that's totally fair well, i mean i guess if the first thing i should ask you is to do with um how you're feeling about the reaction to the album last i checked it was number two on the, the rate your music best of 2021 chart which is obviously no small feat at all um in addition to getting the yellow flannel which i mean you must be on cloud nine right now yeah, it's pretty. It's been pretty dope. Um, I I I didn't expect people to gravitate towards this the way they did. Um, and you know, I'm pretty happy. Um, I, I like the way my discography is developing, and next year I'm going to challenge myself even more and, and see what new stuff I could uh, bring to the table. That's very fair. I'm 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 gonna quote part of the little band camp thing about um. This new album, which I've not said the the name yet, um, I lie here brave my rings and my dresses, which is um, to add to the critical acclaim. I mean, I'm just myself, but I've, um, yeah, I, I, I like it just as much, if not more, than God has nothing to do with this. So I mean, oh, and I was, and I was already hyped up about that one, um, but. In the wee Bandcamp press release thing, it says here, whereas God has nothing to do with this, was a stud was stud a study in mercy. I lie here buried, backwash, find sauce, and being consumed by her malevolent behaviours. Um, and I just kind of was wondering how you managed to make an album that focuses on that without kind of succumbing to that sort of energy. Like, how do you keep yourself sort of grounded if you were able to? Um, it's kind of difficult uh finding a balance because. I think sometimes you enter too deep while you're making music and you gotta kind of pull yourself back. It's um I think it's kind of like when I start writing and I start making music, I'm in a certain mood, but the moment I do something else, um I guess that mood changes. Uh but you know, you still have after effects from the previous mood. And um I I think I've I've been learning just to like handle it, finding the balance and um finding 
you know, just like the right, the right, the right cutoff point for me mm-hmm. to stop um, feeling so down in the dumps when I'm when I'm writing this because the 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 writing process of this one was definitely more graphic than mm-hmm. than the stuff on God's nothing to do with it. When the, when I wrote the you know verse for like well the banshee, um, I've I've never like written anything as as detailed as that. And you know it was kind of hard, but um, you know uh, it's part part of the art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I definitely think the the big takeaway for this album. I mean, I had a, a lot of takeaways, but I do think the the confessional and the confessional nature, as well as just how dark it was, just kind of was like amped up a fair bit. Um, and I'm I'm glad to hear that sort of like you were able to sort of like kind of know when like. To call it a day when it's like okay this is i'll take a yeah. wee break just now um because i mean you, you never want to sacrifice too much of your your well-being for your art um though yeah. yeah yeah um and i suppose my next question because obviously your music's very influenced by experimental hip-hop but just hip-hop of all uh different colours, um, but also black metal. And I just kind of wondered if there was maybe like a genre or like a media or something that like influences your music that people may not assume that it does. Um, Dungeons and Dragons. Oh shit, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mostly, I guess, the way I look at the, the way I look at the character when performing live, Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because on God has nothing to do with it. Um, the put uh, Mesh Meshan put like the devil horns there, and mm-hmm. I used to feel like tiefling when I was performing. And you know, the the visual aspect of this one is much grimy and scarier, and kind of looks like a drow. So uh, I think just when entering uh, the space of being a performance, uh, when performing live, uh, Dungeons and Dragons influences that, but you know, other art um, that that influences it from a sonic and writing perspective. Uh, lots of like horror movies, um, especially the like eerie psychological ones. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff that A twenty four is doing, yeah, just like weird like imagery because it translates well to the music um, as well. Because when I'm fine, if 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 I'm like digging for samples. And uh, the bad part about digging for samples with like horror movie soundtracks is that horror movie soundtracks are supposed to sound scary there. So it's like, ah, you, you know, it's, it's kind of like obvious. It's like, yeah, this is supposed to sound scary. But the, the, the better way for me is uh, finding a sound that sounds eerie just by itself. Like, um, you know, Terra Packers does a cat wailing. And I thought that sounded like pretty eerie by itself. So it was like, all right, let's build something around this. So um, I, 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 you know, big influence from A24 as well, because of their approach to just like what is eerie or scary in the, in the movies is not so, uh, it's, it, 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 I guess, catches you from unexpected directions, if I can. Yeah. I, I, I totally get you there because like you say yeah. if it's a horror film you're expecting it to be scary but I, I can I think I think it was um this morning you were tweeting like about like how A24 movies like it's always end with people like on fire and I feel that yeah. kind of visceralness I could definitely see that influencing your music I suppose that comes from not just films but, like so much of like experiences and different influences yeah. but I feel you managed to kind of compartmentalize that um in oh. a purely uh, well, not even just a purely odd um, audio way. You definitely have like an aesthetic that sort of like demands attention. Um, so horror films that makes sense. A Dungeon and Dragon one that kind of caught me off guard there. But it, <laughs> yeah. the, the the more I think about it, the more the more it makes sense. Um, so one of my favorite songs on the whole project, which obviously there's a lot of pick from there. Um, but Thy Holy Name was a pretty good one. Um, I was listening to it on my walk this morning and despite it being like the most like beautiful sunny day it's still like totally just like there's just so many kind of different things going on especially the climax of that song just kind of makes me feel <laughs> a little i don't say claustrophobic but that kind of if you've watched uncut james if he was like the last yeah. 10 minutes of that just like in a song <laughs> i was just like oh my <laughs> god so um and i suppose 
in a, in a lot of ways there's like the kind of scary elements like the holy the kind of the sermon bit of it as well um yeah. but i think when you sort of like dig into it i think there was still some like I, I guess kind of sentimental nice elements to it um and i'm sure that's the song that's got a little tribute to sophie on it as well yeah. um and yeah. i was just kind of wondering what her music meant to you yeah it was you know just extremely important and um you know, we don't have really have like a lot of people to look up to. So, you know, when you see someone like uh, doing it and just innovating at the level that she was at, it you know inspires you and gives you hope, and you feel like a connection to that. Um, her music was just like you know an important part of just uh, finding that confidence and developing uh, as a musician myself. And you know it was very, very sad um, with the news that we, you know, that we heard of her passing. But you know, all is grateful to um, everything that she brought. Really. Yeah, she. I think everyone can agree that she had a uncompromised vision, and I think if it kind of has obviously inspired a lot of people, including yourself. So I think if that can sort of continue to sort of like just yeah just everyone just kind of being true to themselves especially not thinking too much about the commercial nature of it just what sounds good to you keep doing it yeah. um well, it was a it was a very when the when the line appeared to me i was like i was again caught off guard because of how everything else was just so again claustrophobic but it's a very very touching line um and another sort another sort of line that popped out to me and amongst a whole lot was um on the uh, 666 which has, I guess, what I would put like a lot of jabs. It feels very like, I, 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 I'm trying to think of a synonym for violent, but it was very much a very like angry song to me. Yeah. Um, and there was like a line about Justin Trudeau, and I, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but the Canadian yeah. Prime Minister. And I was just kind of wondering, like, obviously having a platform as big as you do now, and kind of expressing those sort of sentiments. How do you are you just sort of like? say that stuff and not like have any fear at all that people sort of like take it in bad faith or do you just kind of like real you kind of know that going in and just sort of just like you don't try and think about it um i think it's just like with with lyrics like that you expect it to come with um you expect it to come with the um, territory mm-hmm. you know that definitely people that are going to approach you and be like, you know, why would you say something like that? And, you know, it kind of honestly cuts off a few opportunities. Um, you know, there've been places which have been like, yeah, we want to book you, but you can't, you can't say that, <laughs> you can't do this song, or you can't do that song. And, uh, you know, it, it has to come with the territory because for me, I feel like if I'm speaking my truth and, you know, that that's going to be as honest as I could be, especially with the stuff uh, that he has been doing, even though like, I know he puts like a, you know, smile for everybody to see, but like, just like his, you know, treatment and breaking the promises of like indigenous people. I think I just wanted to like, you know, say that as blatantly as I can. I do want to make it clever. I just wanted to say that line and be like, yeah, this is a direct as I'm going to put it. And, um, I think, uh, yeah, it, it comes with the territory. So there's definitely, uh, you know, if somebody doesn't like it, they're, they're probably going to reach out to me if they haven't already. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think that's what I kind of appreciated about it. I think some people might try and be too clever with their bars, but politicians, but sometimes um, kind of call a spade a spade if somebody's been, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of a polite way of saying, um, a dick for like Justin Trudeau I think fits that description so you may as well yeah. just say it how it is um, especially with, the, with what the past yeah. year has been like no I definitely um, appreciated that um, and speaking speaking of 666 um, I couldn't find out what the there's like a sample you use at the start and yeah. I have a feeling that I know what it is but also I don't know what it is that you incorporate at the start is, is it a sample or is it an original sort of like composition I'm not it's sure a- it's a sample. It's from um, it's from a it's from a Zulu chant mm-hmm. uh, back in South Africa, and uh, they're giving it up to this uh, witch doctor character, which um, you know, 
I used to be terrified of just uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I used to be I used to be terrified of witch doctors, but like with how my life has developed and just spiritually, you know, I relate more to you know witch doctors and I would relate to um you know like characters in the Bible. So I thought the sample just fit uh, perfectly for the content that was being spoken on. Mm. So uh, yeah, I got it and um, spiced it up a bit and I just let it ride at the end and was, you know, was pretty grateful to be able to do that. Oh yeah, it was definitely kind of, I mean, to be fair, you did say yourself this um, album's a lot less sample heavy than worked yeah. before, um, but I do feel the samples that you did use were like, um, I guess kind of like we're kind of like a not so much like a quality quantity, but I feel like when they were used, they were used in a pretty major way. So you weren't you weren't kind of trying to put them in the background. I feel that one sort of like really did make it pop. There's a definite pace to that one that I can see it being a good running track in the future when I can actually be bored to start running again. So <laughs> I'll keep that one by. Awesome. Um and. I, th- I think it was in the Indie Heads AMA you they uh, kind of mentioned that you were kind of like a video games buff that like it's sort of like if yeah. if it at least didn't influence you like there's kind of inspiration there um, and I suppose the obvious question would be to ask you what games in particular sort of inspire your vision or motivate you? Uh, probably just like CRPGs mm-hmm. Oh, I play um, so it would be things like Shadowrun I got uh, Borders Gate 3 on early access, and I found this mode that allows me to play like a hex play. Um, then there's Solasta, which is pretty cool. Um, I've been playing like the alpha version of, uh, no, better version, because it's like better access for Pathfinder, mm. uh, Wrath of the Righteous, which is pretty cool, but pretty bloated. Um, yeah, so just like a lot of like CRPGs and and like if I want to like waste time not like thinking and I'll probably play like a sports game like <laughs> FIFA or like, you know, just drive around in Forza, even though the map is like not that big. But uh, yeah, that's 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 usually what I what I do for my game. Have you ever tried to like sample a game and a song that's maybe not came to light, but you're kind of like, I want to incorporate this somehow? Maybe I was thinking something from like Fatal Frame or like one of those like, you know, PS1, PS2, like horror games, I think would be like really sick. Some of the compositions there are pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think like the kind of obvious choices would always be like a Resident Evil or a Silent Hill. But I feel like Fatal Frame's like uh, um, is such a probably one of the eeriest games that I've, de- I've I've not played. I'm too much of a scary cat, but like from what I've witnessed, yeah, I feel like that could make for some some good stuff for sure. Um, it's pretty cool. You mentioned FIFA there as well, or like I think I also saw you like kind of tweet about the football and that. Are you like are you big into the football, or do you sort of like kind of pay attention here and here and there? I I used to be big into it when I was like younger. Um, when I was younger, I I thought I'd be like the next football star. It was funny, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I uh, I was this. I was more into like um, I guess like freestyle football, like those people that juggle like. With like both legs and whatever <laughs> not, I I used I was like I was like into it and I was like really terrible at it as well. I was, you know, I tried to kick the ball the other day. It was just like awful. But yeah, so I was like really in football. Then I stopped watching it. I like I'm like don't know who's who, what's what anymore. I used to support like Arsenal. Then I went to Inter Milan. Then that was like the end of it. <laughs> it's just like, I just I, I just now. Uh, I just I just watch it to see if uh, Ibrahimovic has scored any like fantastic goals. But <laughs> like aside from that, I'm not. I, I can't say I follow it. I've been watching a bit of Euro, mm-hmm. and you know, got bored of it a bit. I will start again once like the the the, the round of sixteen starts again. Yeah, yeah. I, I can kind of see see where you're coming from there. I mean, that sadly kind of Scotland got knocked out. That was where like ninety nine percent of my um, yeah. and interest was coming from and then when they got knocked out I'm like I'll still watch the big games like I think Belgium yeah. and Portugal are on just now so I'm sure that would be pretty good but yeah my 
a very similar trajectory to yourself or like i liked yeah. it a lot when i was younger and then yeah. just like there's just so much going on it just kind of feels yeah. like a tv show where just like six seasons have passed and you're just like i can't i can't <laughs> yeah. let, let it it's run like, it's, it's like supernatural oh my god <laughs> I, i'm i feel really bad for people that like that show i've never watched it myself but it seemed like one of those ones where i, I mean i've watched dexter i know exactly how it feels to really love a show and then just like watch it just jump off the deep end <laughs> It's been going for like 15 years. I was watching it when I was like really depressed, just like in my room watching like Supernatural, um, you know, back in like 2013. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I thought it would end on like season five while I was watching it. I was like, oh, this is like a conclusion. Like, you know, who else do they have? Then they just went like off the deep end. It's like, we are putting hands on everybody in the bible right now it's like we don't <laughs> care if you're lucifer you know whatever like his two lackeys are we don't we don't care if you know how in in the bible they say in the darkness in the beginning there was darkness <laughs> yeah they're fighting that too it's just like <laughs> i'm just like who keeps coming up with the script right like you the two between the two of you you have defeated every spiritual entity that exists why are you still going what else is who who else is there to fight once you like met jesus that's like end game like why are you still doing this you've peaked at that so, point like what else is there to do like fight jesus dad or something like i mean yeah, like, it's just yeah, like <laughs> yeah it starts like it starts like having like you know days of our life syndrome days of our lives has been on tv for like the past 58 seasons and they still manage to like keep it going on, you know, like I'm, I'm just wondering how ridiculous the plot line is right now. And, you know, Supernatural was, you know, if it want, I think it could have gone <laughs> 50 seasons if it, if it, if it, if it wanted to. Yeah, I, I think um, we, we can, uh, I think the equivalent to Days of Our Lives, we've got like all the soap operas here, like Coronation Street and that. And honestly, <laughs> and like every it feels like every three months have just they've just decided to like bring in like an explosion or something so all these like <laughs> all these like grandparents are just like they're sitting in their in their chairs at eight o'clock and just like oh another chain's exploded like they really do be trying to get your attention in every single I, way i was um i walked in on my sister watching the Grey's anatomy episode i i couldn't believe what i was seeing all right so the plot was that this guy had an explosive stuck in his body, right? Mm -hmm. It was going to explode. So in throughout this whole episode, people were evacuating, uh, you know, the building. And one, you know, one doctor was holding the explosive with his hand in the body because if he lets it go, it's going to explode. Then um, he's just like no, sorry, I can't do this. And he walks out, then somebody else is like, oh, I'll save everybody and touches the explosion again. So now you have like this lady who's like touching this explosion inside of this guy's body. And this guy just walks away, just like, yeah, sorry, I'm done here. <laughs> and he just like, walks away. And I'm just wondering like, what the hell am I watching? None of this makes sense. You you lose all respect for me because I think I've watched like every single episode, and the only reason is it just like see that stuff that happens. I think that happens like in the second season. They bring in like terrorist attacks, shootings. Oh. They like you go into it thinking it's gonna be like oh doctors like want to make out of each other. They just like anything you can think of has happened. Natural disasters, mm -hmm. like fires, everything. I can. Yeah, I'm I'm a sucker for that sort of stuff. Stuff that just ends up getting, like, even to like I wouldn't even call it a guilty a guilty pleasure. If something's trashy and I enjoy it, I'm just I'm going in. I'm just like yeah. I'm a, betting all I, on that. I respect it because uh, reality TV mm -hmm. is one of the greatest uh, inventions man <laughs> has ever created. It's it's incredible. I've been watching Ninety Day Fiance, and I'm just wondering where to find it. It's it's, uh, there's never been more we, we we always talk about how like TV shows have compelling villains mm -hmm. the villains in 90 Day Fiance brilliant, nobody could write that I, nobody, I, 
I've watched, I've seen like the memes and that, and there's this guy that's just like, he just, he seems like a, a villain that Marvel would have a hard time trying to like think of somebody to go up against him. I don't know what his name is, but he just looks like he is there to ruin everyone's day and successfully does so. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like surprised. Like the type <laughs> of characters that are in that show, I'm just like, where do you find this? Where do you find this? <laughs> there, was a, there was a guy, there was a guy who went to Brazil, and um, I think he um, he was this. He wanted to go swimming. Um, is, is this, he wanted to go swimming, so. Um, he was afraid of a parasite in the water, so I think he had a, he had he put on like five pairs of underwear or something like that. It was something ridiculous <laughs> like that, and he went with like some some water armor. It's kind of like some weird thing, and he became so baggy that he couldn't swim. He was just like floating, <laughs> and he. He, he was like in jail for arson and each time he would use like another word to describe why he was in jail. He was like, I was accused <laughs> of arson. People said, you know, just like, uh, <laughs> I meant to cause a little fire here or there. Like, it's, yeah, not, it's, not, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Everyone yeah. does it. <laughs> oh um, and I suppose, um, to kind of like, I mean, I could I could talk about trash TV with you all day, but I'll, 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 I'll <laughs> um, I guess something that's been on my mind is that um, I know you did a, a fairly big interview with a little guy called Fantano last year. I don't know some people in the chat maybe have heard about him, um, but it was around about that point where like I feel like where your popularity is at just now. I think you maybe were like there. And so since that jump up to where it is now, I'm just kind of wondering, like, um, is it started to, like, boil over? Like, are you getting, like, are people recognising the street? Are you getting, like, DM after DM, folk trying to get your attention? Like, what's the situation compared to this time last year? Um, I guess there are definitely more emails to reply to <laughs> uh, now. Um, I don't know. I, I, I guess I've got a bit of traction. Um... I, I guess n nothing has really changed on my side, honestly. Um, it's uh, you know, just more emails. There's one, there's one thing that like caught my, uh, you know, attention is just like uh, going back and seeing, um, you know, when you started off and, you know, I go, I, and your streaming numbers. I remember getting like, one thousand streams in like you know, four months, you know, and that was like really dope to me. And, um, you know, even I remember even like having like a contact, um, you know, email for mm -hmm. my, for, for backwash. And I remember never receiving like anything. I was just like, why, why do I even have this? And, um, you know, there's just like, now I guess uh, just like more emails to answer to, and I'm like really grateful uh, about that. No, I mean I suppose like uh, how things are just now. I suppose getting a lot of emails will be a good indicator of your popularity. <laughs> Um, and I suppose that kind of ties into something that I was wanting kind of to ask. Like, kind of now the. I suppose the like, only way I can think of putting it is like now that your name carries like a fair bit of like weight now, like people are more aware um, of yourselves. Like, um, is there kind of any like dream collaborations that you'd like to make a uh, reality? I know you've uh, said names like uh, like JPEG and Danny Brown and that, but are there any ones that like may have seemed kind of like out of reach last year, whereas now it's like, oh yeah, I could actually make this shit happen? Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, last year I was just. You know, I, the clipping one, you know, how that one came in, um, you know, so grateful to like Jonathan and William, you know, that, that was like a dream of mine, um, to be able to just, you know, do my thing in clipping B. And when they sent that one through, um, I, I was like really honored. I was, I was, I was like really touched and, you know, I'm very, very grateful to them. They're, they're very, very. You know, they're, very, they're very nice for that. And, uh, you know, always wanted to work with uh, 
Lingua Ignata, uh, you know, I just want to find like a perfect track for her. Definitely want to get on the next one, that's for sure. Um, I think it'd be like really dope with like, you know, it's just like some industrial noise and um, something that breaks down into like Lingua on the piano or some, or some I think that would be like really, really dope. Um, you know, and Diamanda Giles, I'm gonna, you know, I, I usually just like mention it, like she probably doesn't even know I exist, but I pull a lot from her and I'm like a huge fan. And, you know, that would be dope. And I would like to work with Zia and Ardo uh, as well. I think that, I think our styles will complement each other pretty well. And, uh, you know, I think I've changed my voice uh, I think I think my voice is now trained enough to rap on um, like this heavy metal uh, beats, and <laughs> I would like that. I like that. I think if Zelenard are like makes like too much sense. I mean, the same way that the, the clipping one like again makes too much sense. I'm like, I feel if <laughs> if, if it makes again not to repeat but if it, if it makes so much sense i feel like it's just a matter of time it's not a case of if rather than when and i feel like all those ones you listed there i feel um it's, it's kind of good to know that the ones that you're coming up with because i feel like a lot of people if they were getting some traction maybe like i want to collaborate with uh, billy eilish now or somebody and i mean to be fair I, I don't know what a backwash billy eilish song might sound like but um <laughs> i think the fact you're all thinking of ones that kind of tie into the kind of way not to compromise a vision is a uh, definitely yeah, admirable. I, I, one thing I noticed is, you know, these days is when you, you know, mainstream projects all feature like the same artist. It's all is like the same artist, like with little variation. And I think it would be nice. I think it would be nice if they feature artists that like make sense. Yeah. You know? I think it, it you know, because it brings the album vision more, uh, brings the uh, album vision in more. Um, so I like features that make sense. <laughs> well, I think a good example of that out with, like, obviously, you seem to kind of uh, know who to kind of surround yourself with. I mean, you've had, um, um, is it a Ada and Devi, both from uh, Black Dress, like, again, ones that just make too much sense there um but i feel like in the kind of the wider hip-hop scene i mean sometimes a little lucy there feature can i be like it isn't like say the new taylor album where it's like you wanted to make this sound like it was like out of this world space wise get little lucy there on compared yeah. to like i mean just like little lucy there just being on there for the sake of i think yeah it just there's not really any advantage other than maybe like kind of short-term gain from like yeah. streams and all that like in the long run in 10 years time it's that feature can actually contribute to the quality of it and I can see um with the people that you sort of bring on that like it's it's kind of to add to the vision so yeah I, I kind of yeah. think we totally agree on that regard I do like the I do like the idea of a controversial feature though um not controversial in the sense of the person who's involved but controversial in the sense of uh, the final product. I always think about um, Lou Uzi's verse on Bad and Bougie. The, when, it first came, <laughs> when it first came out, uh, people were like, in between, they were like, what is this? And they were like, I kind of like it. You know, it was kind of <laughs> like a split between like two people. And I, I, I like that idea of, uh, of a polarizing uh, feature. But like stirring the pot, I think that like definitely has like its a uh, value, and I think it's so laughable now that that bad and bougie thing was ever like this big culture war of like, yeah. are you team little Lucy or not? And it's yeah, yeah. Nowadays you go to that song like, what are you most looking forward to? It's it's probably yeah. it's probably little Lucy. So yeah, I mean, is there like, can you think of like somebody that you'd want to collaborate that might be like out with that sort of like? It's kind of, I guess, that kind of like experimental caliber that you usually bring on something that like people would be like, oh, why is Backwash collaborating with them? But like, you feel could make something work with. Is there anyone uh, you've ever thought of? Probably Katie Day. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Katie Day would be cool. I think that our music is kind of like 
in terms of sonics, it's like different ends of the spectrums. Car music is, uh, you know, so beautiful and so ethereal. And I guess mine's a bit jagged and aggressive. And I think it'd be nice to kind of find it in between or spend some time on the other spectrum and spend some time on the other spectrum on the same song. I think I think that would be sick. And um, I was gonna say Lauren Gosfield, but we've already done uh, in thy holy name, and she's uh, she's incredible. Um, yeah, I think those have been like my 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 main two. Yeah, I think definitely the the Katie Day one. I can for sure um, see where the the connection comes from there, but still being a bit kind of like out of left yeah. field for sure. Um, yeah. So I guess um, we've kind of touched upon sampling a little bit. Um, um, especially this album here. Um, the the I think my favorite one was probably the Godspeed one, which I feel you meant. I, I don't know if you mentioned like in the months leading up to it, but when it finally popped up, I'm just like. Her, her mind, her mind, like galaxy brain, <laughs> <laughs> galaxy brain. Um, but I suppose you, you are backwash after all. What is like your favorite sample that you've kind of incorporated into a track? Whether it be one that's made it on to one of your projects or one that's sort of like kind of just maybe kind of in the vault, so to speak. Mm, my my favorite one is probably the Godspeed one. Um, mostly because. Um, the way it's chopped up and the way it connects to the hook part and just uses the Godspeed solo in the hook part. I really like how that was used. Um, Spells is also, you know, one of my favorites. And um, um, the, uh, you know, 666 in Osaka and the work that was done there, those would be my three. Uh, in the vault, um, I've got one sample that uses uh, Linkin Park Faint. Okay, okay, yeah. I can see, I can see that working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I kind of like distorts it and, um, but you know, I haven't found anything for it. But yeah, those are those are like my 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 three favorite uh, samples that I've, uh, I've ever used. Also, like. The black sheep one. I also like the samples on on, on black sheep because they're they're not really uh, instruments, but they are just like rolls of like sound, like the chants of the band. So I think that's uh, I think yeah. that's, a, that's a solid top three to have. I mean, the fact that you kind of like have to choose a top three, I suppose, kind of goes to show that you've you've worked with the samples well. I guess is <laughs> so, um, especially yeah the the. I think the other two that I'd probably mention. I mean, the Black Sabbath one. I think is the one that all people who like are even like vaguely familiar with your work are always like, "This just like, how has nobody done this yet?" I think that's probably the 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 best type of sampling is when somebody does something and you're like, you kind of kick yourself because it just again, I guess the key phrase of this interview has been it makes too much sense, which <laughs> yeah. is the one that I keep going back to. Um and I think again I think you touched upon this question recently, um but just kind of like I suppose just for the sake of um just kind of like um a kind of video evidence of it, the the whole kind of situation with God has nothing to do with it. It's been like on Bandcamp for the longest time. I had a brief stint on Spotify and then yeah. went away. So is this just going to be your kind of ex-military type situation where we just never see it appear? Yeah, it's going to be my ex-military for the longest. Um. I'm gonna keep it up on the band cap for free. But uh, you know, um due to I guess legal issues, I'm not able to uh, actually sell it. Yeah, I I, I think I kinda I suppose you don't want to like alter any like I suppose you've got it's there in its form that everyone can get online for free. I suppose it's not kind of a situation where somebody has to pay money to access it or that. So yeah. there's always that going for it. Um, yeah. but I mean, I suppose kind of like if we're gonna make kind of like hip hop comparisons, I think one that I saw you tweet about recently that made me kind of go like, "Hmm, let me ask her about this when I get to talk to her." So you compared "God Has Nothing to Do with This" to like your kind of college dropout record, this yeah. new one like being kind of late registration, but also Jesus esque. Yeah. Um, and I suppose like 
with what kind of obviously you don't have to give the game away too much but is there like a sort of like can, do you see yourself going on a trajectory that's kind of like similar to any of the other Kanye records not that I'd probably ever put your kind of like your music sonically towards each other but I suppose yeah. since you've kind of put the 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 map there so to speak is a uh, any other sort of like is there gonna be an A08 backwash <laughs> moment uh, or <laughs> I don't... Uh, I don't I don't know about an eight oh eight, but um you know, maybe like a maybe like a Kitsi ghost, just like a side experimental like project. Um but I, I think I put this on I put God is nothing as college dropout because um because it's uh I think that's when like Kanye was like locked in and focused and found like his sound mm -hmm. and like you know this is what I'm gonna do because there was um what was the name of the tape before College Dropout? Oh, I should know this. Cause I watched the Kanye uh, like this two hour long Kanye West iceberg, but it's totally yeah. totally escaping me. Yeah, it's ex escaping me too. But okay, the idea was when you heard that tape. Uh, it you know the instrumentals were dope, but it didn't sound as full and as focused as they were on Colors Dropout. And I feel like that was me, like you know, on Deviancy. And you know, when Colors Dropout dropped, that's you know, that's Kanye. And you know, that's like one of the greatest like albums that's ever been released. And he followed it up with like late registration, you know. And you know, late registration. I feel like the instrumentals there are a bit more denser. Especially, especially with John Byron's work, work on that, and um, I feel I, I feel the same way as well. In in terms of uh, sonically, I think the idea is the same, and you can kind of draw a line from color dropout to late registration, where you know, the themes and ideas um, share some similarities, but you know late registration is just like on a bigger scale. And I feel like that's how it is with God is nothing to do it. Because sometimes I hear the production of God is nothing to do it. And I was like, you know, the things I could have like changed there, um, which you know, I, I changed on the on the on the later project. So um I, in terms of like having a graduation though, that one is that one's very difficult because um that's like some graduation is so like Synth, like happy synth heavy and you know it's a it's, it's an amazing album but uh i don't i don't think i don't think i ever see my myself making that type of song yeah t-pain's not going to be popping up in a backwash song anytime <laughs> soon that's 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 a major takeaway there uh, <laughs> but i i kind of assumed that if there was to Kind of, if we're kind of follow that pattern, that like a new project would kind of either be sort of like, and even just more hectic mishmash different ideas, like a life of Pablo, or sort of like yeah, like a maybe just a wee side project, like a kid sequel. So I feel like, um, whatever you're gonna end up doing next is gonna be interesting nonetheless. But I suppose this new album's just came out. Let's not get <laughs> too ahead of ourselves. I'm sure. <laughs> um. But I suppose the last question um, that I've, I've got to ask, we've got, there's a few uh, kind of like fan questions. Um, oh, hi everyone. <laughs> um, but I mean, I've got, I've got, I've got two here actually. But I'm gonna go with the one that's actually more relevant, which is um, what at the moment are you listening to that you're just particularly loving just now? Um, right now I'm loving the new Sense of Dialogue record. The joint bed hate crime, perfect, Just absolutely perfect. Uh, rural internet, incredible, incredible. Um, and um, been listening to you know Black Midi, mm -hmm. Advocate. I want like a an album full of John L's. That's all I'm asking for. Just, <laughs> the album's already like a nine point seven out of ten you know to push it up to like 10 i just need like an album full of like john Wells. and um, uh, yeah, an album that just makes you feel like you've just you're constantly stuck in like a nightmare almost that's yeah, good that, yeah, I, I, yeah. it's a good track to go for for sure <laughs> yeah um i've been listening to a lot of nine inch nails 
uh, especially over the development of the album. Um, you know, that was spiral influenced, uh, you know, just the, the harshness of the frequencies and, and sonics there. Mm -hmm. um, also listening to uh, Street Cleaner, Godfish, mm -hmm. um, you know, love their drum play on that one. Um, and um, all this have to listen to Danny Brown who has got that on me. Uh, I trusted the exhibition. I think there's 40 coming out this year, which I'm like really excited about. And um, I think No Name is also supposed to have a new project out and I'm anticipating that one. But that, those are like mo mostly what I'm listening to. Yeah, I think th those are uh, especially the Danny Brown and No Name one. Um, 40 is probably kind of, I had like a kind of top five most anticipated albums kind of like list in my head of sort of like, what to make sure I prioritise amongst everything else. And yeah, that one's going to be, even though we've not even heard like a snippet of it, it's like, if it's even like half as good as 30, then yeah. we're going to be eating good. We're going to be eating yeah. good. <laughs> also, also Conway. I've been listening to Conway as well. I mean, yeah, that's, uh, there's some, some goodies. Definitely check out some of them. Um, and I suppose now I'll jump over to um, the questions here. So if um, anyone's watching just now as well, there's a form in the chat or just even just drop them in the little chat bit um, but I guess I'll start off with um, this question from Buffalo Staple which is which track of the new project would make Backwash from five years ago lose their mind the most? Sorry? Um, which track of the new project would make Backwash from five years ago lose their mind the most? Uh, that's a good question. Probably well of the Banshee because um, it's, it's very rough it's very harsh and when, when I was making stuff like feet, that was like totally out of like my wheelhouse, even like thinking, even though I had those like stonewall that I did, like totally out of my wheelhouse thinking I could make something like that. And uh, it's just ridiculous how much the sound has changed. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if, if five years from me heard well the Banshee, I'd be like, first of all, why are you telling everybody this? Second of all, we need to check into a therapist. Right <laughs> I mean, I, I do appreciate your five year old, your five year old past version <laughs> kind of reading yourself there, but I think that's a good one, a good one to pick there. Um, again, this this uh, username here is quite good. Shit post and chill asked uh, <laughs> Sabbath for obviously an influence on God has nothing to do with this. What other heavy metal bands do you find influence you and what metal bands are you enjoying today? So, um, I guess um, in terms of like the heavy music, um, there wasn't a lot of, uh, there wasn't a lot of, uh, I guess, um, like strictly metal bands that influenced this one. Um, there was Thor's Hammer, you know, with an R, mm -hmm. not the racist one. But there was, uh, you know, Thor's Hammer that I listened to a lot just to try and gauge the the, the tone of the of the lead singer because she's like fucking brilliant. But just like, you know, the original ones, or you know, Oranti Pazuzu um, was also something I was listening to a lot, and how it's something to do with the guitars and how pizzicato it sounds. You know, it's 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 kind of hard trying to get that like programmatically so um and, and you know the imperial triumphant um just their use of like weird instruments is 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 something that i'm into daughters as well i think for mostly this one um was you know with god i'm like all right you know these are the these are the metal influences that um i'm going into uh, but now it's like the sound is kind of developing into its own and um, it's more like being influenced by the feeling that an album gives you mm -hmm. um, rather than the Sonics. Even though Nine Inch Nails, um, you know, Downward Spire influenced the Sonics as well, the feeling that the album gave you as well uh, was something that I was uh, really into. And I guess listening to metal these days, those would be like my, my go-to. Uh, uh, you know, Thor's Hammer, Orange Pazuzu, uh, Imperial Triumphant, and Liturgy. 
no good choices there. Um, Imperial Triumphant are also. I'm, I need heavy metal is always one that I need to make myself more acquainted with, but the stuff that I've heard is definitely like, gives me reason. Oh yeah, oops. <laughs> Candle Mass, I forgot. Candle Mass. That's my shit. <laughs> That's my shit. That's my shit. The the vocalist, the vocalist, incredible, in fucking incredible. I heard that he was just like a session musician that they just invited to sing, you know, songs for them. But that's like, sounds like, it sounds like a fake creature. <laughs> it's, amazing. it's amazing. Okay. Well, that's, that's a pretty good description there. I need to take some pointers off you for, for reviewing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alex Crow 55 asked, how did you come to find your unique sound? Congrats on the new album. Thank you. Um, it was mostly just taking the leap, you know, the, the thing is that, uh, when you're starting off as a rapper, people are going to tell you what you need to rap on. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you know, producer is like, you know, what? you know, your voice doesn't really match these beats. Let me try and put you on these beats. And, you know, the type of beats that I thought I needed to rap on because I thought needed, I thought something needed to be catchy. I thought something needed to get people moving. Um, it, that wasn't like really me. So on God, I had to take that leap to say, you know, make music the way you want to make it, no compromises. I watched an interview with Danny Brown where he said, um, I, cause back in 2002, it was a different, releasing an album, a hip hop album was a different monster. Mm -hmm. You needed to have a single, you know, you, you needed to have a single out and that single would gain traction so people can go to the stores and buy CDs. That's why, you know, when people heard in the club and, you know, 21 questions and all of those singles that 50 was releasing, uh, you know, they rushed to the stores to get the whole album because they wanted to see what the whole album would be about. Um, you know, I, I watched an interview with Danny Brown where I've forgotten the artist it was, but he was saying he heard one artist and that told him that, that you don't really need to be like a single artist in this day to like release music. And, uh, you know, that was kind of the mentality that I was in going through God is not going to do it because I was just like, you know what? No, we're just going to make an album. I want to be like, I, I, I don't really want to be an artist that somebody, you know, plays one track for. Like, you know, that, that artist had that one hot track in like 1996. Like, <laughs> I... I I don't really want that. I want like, you know, albums to be an experience. I, I kind of look at it like, um, you know, when you're watching movies and there's the film authors, I think A-U-T-E-U-R, I think so. <laughs> and I kind of, I kind of look at the album experience like that. And um, I want to make projects that somebody would have to listen to in one sitting because it takes you on a journey. Um, so, um, going into the new sound was all about just no compromises and just being the most authentic person that, you know, you really want to be, uh, you know, I've always been into, uh, you know, different styles of, you know, heavy music and harsh frequencies and, um, just putting that on, on the beats and with having the lyrics to match it was like the next, was the, the next logical step with that. I, I can I, I like that point about kind of like how you get like kind of film water you get like your Lynches and you get like your kind of your Kubricks and all that where it's like you you can you can watch a film and know like that's definitively them and then you also kind of want to go well what, what else am I missing out on here like kind of you feel the compulsion to also check out the rest it's not something that's just sort of like wasn't just like a it's, like you say you don't want to just be like the hot single you want like yeah. the visionary kind of experience and I feel like. Um, if there's nothing bad with like a single doing well, you're just like, oh great, more people are finding me, but you want it to be a case of that's yeah. not the intent. The intent is I make a good album. If a single seems to get some traction, then I mean fair dues. But no, I think that's a good kind of mindset to be in for sure. Yeah. Um what's the question I've got here? Um it was kind of, kind of tied into something that I was gonna ask but didn't um but An Anthony that's in the chat just now asked what's your favorite social media platform? Oh, did somebody ask me what's my favorite social media platform? Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite is Twitter. My worst is Twitter. 
because people okay. always um, ask me, hey, did you like tweet something weird on Twitter? And I'd be like, what? <laughs> me? <laughs> never. <laughs> no, never. I'm always sweating when an interviewer brings up Twitter. Like, I, I read from your tweets and the sweat just starts dropping. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> Which which one though? Is it the one that was very like I don't know, like one you'd want to bring up, or is it going to be something to do with how much I don't like the film Airbud? Like, let me know what this yeah, tone's going to be. Yeah, it's probably something about John Boyega and my attraction to him. I, I mean, uh, who can blame you anyway? But like, it's very absolutely, like <laughs> absolutely. It's, well, you can't blame me. Exactly. I mean, I, I suppose something I wanted to ask you was kind of like, what's your sort of like. I suppose, like, relationship with something like hip-hop Twitter, because I feel like it's kind of, like, a monolith. Um, just, I suppose, like, have you had much experience with hip-hop Twitter, or is it just sort of, like, are you just sort of, like, involved in all of Twitter, all just kind of, is you don't really sort of, like, pay much mind to it? Um, I've had some experience with uh, hip-hop Twitter. It's hilarious. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's hilarious, like, I, I I like watching people make comparisons that don't make sense. <laughs> you know, it'll be like that thirty the 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 thirty seconds in the new Tyler track is much better than the fifty seconds in the new <laughs> Jake. You'd be like, what? What are, what are you what are you talking about? It, it's it, I love the comparisons. They like as soon as like a, an album wouldn't even drop for like one second. And somebody will always be like, album of the year. And I'm like, what? Like the album barely just came, it just came out. Like you still listen, you haven't heard like first, I, I love hip hop Twitter because it's hilarious. It is like, I, I feel like it's almost like I'm expecting somebody to be like, this was a social experiment. We have like been aware of everything that's going on. It's going to be like some Harvard study because that makes me feel happier than the fact that people actually do this shit like unironically yeah. i mean yeah. the, the big talk this past weekend's been like oh the dj drama like oh my god if dj drama wasn't on new tyler it'd be a 10 and then people being like if if dj drama wasn't on it it wouldn't be a 10 i'm like do you just hear yourself talk like this is just gonna <laughs> this will be the conversation for the next week um and then people are just gonna be ranking Kanye again or they're gonna be saying yeah. Yo, yeah. have you have you heard this oldie verse that Frank did? Like that's where we're gonna come. <laughs> we're gonna go. It's, we're gonna come full circle. It's gonna happen. But that goes viral every uh, every week. Uh, I, I mean, I suppose that's gonna like the comfort of it. Like you always know what it's gonna come back to. Somebody's gonna say that J Cole slept on or something like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean slept on? He like so fat. Um records like. <laughs> it's yeah there's like i don't know i kind of like it reminds me in the same way where like you see like almost like a tweet on twitter and you're like i saw that on tumblr like nine years ago and it's like <laughs> the context hasn't changed also like somebody like probably nine years ago would have been like man tyler slept on like y'all like yeah. what are you doing it's like he is he's never a grammy award winning rap yeah. what are you on about yeah there's it's it's mostly funny i try not to yeah. like lose my my sanity too much about hip-hop twitter <laughs> um and i suppose um i think that's yes yeah, unless i've missed no nope, no nope. this is the last one and it's definitely the least serious question out of the lot from your energy man which is who would win a fight every pokemon or one billion lions what, one billion lions yeah one billion lions or every pokemon Oh, one day of lions or every Pokemon. All right, let's 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 try and break this down. Okay, <laughs> so you got every Pokemon. I don't know how many that would be, but uh, I would have to imagine that these Pokemons have different scaled abilities. Some are stronger than the other, and others are stronger than the other, and others are weaker than the other but they still carry supernatural kind of like powers to them. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a question of, are they attacking together? <laughs> and is the, po is the Pokemon being controlled by a Pokemon master who is limited by the amount of Pokeballs that, that he could throw? Then on the other side, you have one billion lions and, um, you know, it would take some organization 
to be able to organize a pride full of 1 billion lions. So um, it might disperse and might not be organized enough for you to have like a direct attack. But the same thing can be said about the Pokemon as well. Um, so I think this is according, this would, they, whoever would win is whoever who can be more organized. And if the Pokemons have a Pokemon master who would be able to organize them, then I'm probably putting my money in the Pokemon. <laughs> And I need to say that I admired the thought process here. I, I was, I bet me was like, she's probably just going to be like every Pokemon are one billion lines. You, you thought that shit through, which I mean, <laughs> that just puts you up in the, the big leagues there. Um, I would probably agree, even though some of the Pokemon are literally like ice cream and eggs in that. I'm sure yeah. like the big dogs, like the legendary yeah. ones, they'd, I mean, lions, yeah. lions wouldn't that, stand that, a chance. That, 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 that you know, one with the hips was his Mewtwo. Oh, oh yeah, oh <laughs> yeah. Mewtwo shows up. You know, shit's getting serious. I wouldn't want to catch Mewtwo like that. Like that's like a really scary kangaroo. <laughs> I mean, that's probably the best description I've heard of Mewtwo ever. But yeah, if he showed up, I'd be like, right, me, I'd be taking me my one billion lines. Like we're we're off skis. Yeah, like we we're, we're away. We're away. I'll, I'll leave this for you. <laughs> oh no, that's great. Um, I suppose all I've got left to ask, just like just um, kind of like, I suppose giving you kind of the platform here to sort of like promote yourself. Like, what would you like to say to the to the people? Um, thank you all so much for listening. Uh, if you're interested, um, you can, uh, if you're interested in getting the digital vinyl, uh, check out my band camp page, but you know, even with that, I'm, I'm really just grateful for everyone who listened and thank you for coming. This has been, uh, awesome. No, f thank you so much for coming along and agreeing to come on, um, and Jay, I mean, if you haven't listened to Backwash already, then what, what the fuck are you doing? Go listen to the new album and then listen to the last one. And listen to them again for all of eternity. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we'll catch you all later. Take care. Bye-bye.